Hi there, in this video I'm going to try and make the fuel delivery system for the Jerry Howell V-Twin and if this doesn't work out uh, I think I'll uh, go for the easier option and that is to raise the fuel tank level with the uh, carburetors. So the engine has got what I call a fuel reservoir um, which holds the fuel at the level of the uh, carburetors, the intakes and uh, there's three pipes involved there's uh, an inlet which is shorter than this overflow so this is coming from the fuel pump and this outlet here is at the bottom of the reservoir which goes to the carbs and uh, this is the overflow that returns fuel to the fuel tank so the idea is that you pump fuel in and it sort of maintains a level a constant level that's in theory whether in practice I can get this to work I don't know uh, but I guess we'll find out okay so this is an outline of the plan uh, I've got 12 volts DC power source here I'm going to try and run everything off 12 volts 3 amp fuse and I've got this PWM uh, a Chemo M171 5 amp DC uh, so this is going to control the fuel pump. Now I got this from CPC in the UK and you control it by um, changing the pulses or the amount of pulses going to the fuel pump by uh, twiddling this knob here. So we've got 12 volts going to this fuel pump which is an Extron uh, fuel pump from uh, Nexus Model Supplies in the UK. Now uh, this is one that Adam suggested and uh, it is sort of like overly powerful for this particular application it delivers something like 1.8 litres maximum uh, a minute um, so with the use of this PWM I'm going to try and slow this motor down and also I might need to restrict the output as well by uh, reducing the um, the sort of hole in the tube and uh, what this will do is once it's up and running is it will take fuel from the fuel tank and uh, send it up to the fuel reservoir and uh, any uh, overflow will then get returned to the fuel tank so I'm going to try and maintain a consistent sort of like flow using this uh, control knob so uh, that's the plan so in terms of the uh, PWM that's uh, what I got from CPC that's the box that it came in and in terms of the fuel pump that's the fuel pump this extra fuel pump and uh, that's the box it came in but I've, I've realized I've got a problem straight away because um, these connections here they take pipe with an internal diam uh, diameter six millimeters I haven't got any <laughs> so um, that's something else I need to order hopefully it won't be too long before that arrives fuel pipes arrived so that's a six millimeter internal diameter that'll fit nicely onto the uh, fuel pump now for the rest of en the engine I'm using this size pipe that's got an internal diameter of um, uh, let me see three millimeters so to join those, these two together I've made these uh, little connectors and um, the hole through there is a sixteenth of an inch and uh, what I could do is, if I need to restrict the flow even further, um, I can make this hole smaller. So I can make another connector with a smaller hole. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. So this is uh, typically how the connector will sort of connect up really. Nice tight fit. 
So I'll connect everything up to the uh, fuel pump and then uh, I'll get back to you. Well it's sort of working, the problem I've got is to get the motor started you've got to turn this dial around about 3 o'clock and then you've got to back it off otherwise it'll overflow up here so I'll try and demonstrate that so turn the ignition on, not the fuel on I'm going to put this rag over the top of the uh, little reservoir to stop any fuel from actually spurting out Now back it off now. There's no fuel coming out of there at the moment. If I take that top off, I'll find that that reservoir is actually full. I won't do that because it'll all spurt out. Um, if I turn the motor up a little bit, you might see some fuel come out here. There you go. So just back it off. Now whether or not this works when the engine's running, I don't know, but the only uh, way to find out is to uh, give it a try. Well I uh, filled the tank up and uh, took it outside and uh, I couldn't really get that motor to run until I turned it right round here and then fuel spurted right out the top. Uh, so I've just come to the conclusion that it's, it's far too difficult to control. Um, even if I put a small sort of like restriction in the pipe, I think it's still going to be difficult. And to be honest, this setup for the pump is so complicated. And, uh, I, you know, and I don't like having wiring down there and the potential of fuel leaking out. Um, so I, I don't like admitting defeat, but uh, what I've decided to do, I'm going to rip it all out and I'm just going to put a fuel tank in line with the, the carburettors. So it's just a matter of putting some longer legs on here. Once I've done that, I'll get back to you.
Well, it's a bit of a shame that that didn't work out, but I, I just didn't like the uh, thought of fuel spurting out um, and probably leaking on electronic components. Uh, but the really race fuel tank seems to work okay. Probably not as elegant, but, uh, but it's functional. And uh, the, the starter mechanism works pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that, how that's turned out. Um, so I guess that's pretty much it for this uh, little engine. I've still got an oil leak, <laughs> so I'll uh, revisit that at some point in time. Uh, but I've been promising my wife that I'd get on with some DIY once I've completed the engine, so uh, I think I need to get on with that. So uh, it might be a while before I start my next project, but uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you later.